there's a new way of writing Kotlin. It's visual, it's interactive, and it allows you to explore code from your projects in entirely new ways, as well as quickly and easily prototype new Kotlin code. I'm talking about Kotlin Notebooks, a new cell-based interface for writing Kotlin that JetBrains released recently for IntelliJ IDEA. Whether you're a software developer, a data scientist, or want to simply power up the way that you explore Kotlin code, it's something worth checking out. Let's take a closer look together. I'm really excited to show you Kotlin Notebooks today because they provide a new way of interacting with Kotlin code. As you can see, I already have a blank Kotlin Notebook open here. But to get to this place, you first need to do a bit of setup. You first install the Kotlin Notebooks plugin, which you can do by going to Preferences and then Plugins. In the marketplace, you can simply type Kotlin Notebooks and you'll find the correct plugin. Kotlin Notebooks are currently available in IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate. Make sure your other plugins are also up to date for the best experience. Once you've done that, you can simply go to your projects view, right click and create a new Kotlin Notebook. This will start you off with your first empty cell. And from here, you can begin exploring. You may already be familiar with the concept of notebooks from other languages like Python, for example. At their core, they're a cell-based user interface for interacting with your code. So within each of these cells, I can write some Kotlin code if I want to. At the most basic level, you can write some simple Kotlin expressions. For example, I could use my Kotlin notebook as a calculator and solve some hard mathematical problems. I can run this individual cell and then see its result as its output just a few seconds later. I could also assign this to a variable, in this case four, uh, and store the result of my computation. And then when I rerun this, I could actually access the same variable in the next cell independently of the previous one. Because Kotlin notebooks are designed for prototyping and exploration, you're not actually limited to just code though. You can also add markdown cells where you can provide extra information for what you're doing in your notebooks. Now here's a real power up for Kotlin notebooks. You can actually pull in your project module into the context of the notebook and make all the classes and functions that you have defined available in that notebook. So when I set this up, I automatically get access to all the symbols of my project. In this case, my project is actually inspired by me playing tabletop games with my friends. It's a little server-side Ktor application that provides a dice roller. So it's just a simple app that provides endpoints for rolling dice with a certain number of sides. Now, because the notebook has access to all of the functions and classes that I have defined in my project, I can now interactively explore my dice rolls and, for example, look at the points distribution. For example, how many points can I expect when I roll my dice 10,000 times? I can use the same API that I would normally use in just regular old Kotlin code. And here we see a sampling of 10,000 rolls. Now in the cell below this, I could just use my regular Kotlin tools that I'm familiar with and compute the average, somewhere around 10. That probably checks out. But really when I'm exploring topics like this, I'd like to have a better visualization of my data. Out of the box, Kotlin notebooks support images, LaTeX formulas, and even rich HTML output. But since we're working with a bunch of numbers and would like to visualize statistics, it would actually be nice to get some data visualization in the form of charts. An easy way to do so is via the Candy library, which provides charting functionality. We can pull it in using the percent %use directive. You can see that there's a whole bunch of libraries available out of the box to use in your notebooks with ease, whether that's coroutines, date time, or serialization support. In our case, we'll use the candy plotting library. Now we can get to actually visualizing our data. I'd like to see each face on the dice and how often that face came up during our little simulation. So I can just prepare the data the same way I would in regular Kotlin. I create a grouping based on the face and then I count how many elements there are in each group. That already gives us a nice overview of the actual distribution between the different numbers. Now all that's left is to create a bar chart using this data. 
Candy has a nice Kotlin DSL, so really I just need to specify the X and Y axis values. Then executing this cell renders the actual chart. And look, it's even interactive. I can see the detailed values when I hover over each bar. So we can say that when we roll a regular fair dice, we expect each number to come up roughly the same amount. But with notebooks, we can now do a quick exploration of how that changes when we instead roll with advantage, which means taking the maximum of two rolls. To do so, we can go back to the beginning of our notebook where we rolled our dice. And instead of rolling regularly, we'll roll with advantage. Here, it is important to remember that each cell runs individually. So because we made a change at the beginning of our notebook, we also want to rerun all the other cells so that they all get the new values. That is as easy as hitting run all. And just like that, we've gained another insight about our dice roller. When we roll with advantage, we're far more likely to roll a 20 than we are to roll a 10. Probably makes sense intuitively, and now we have the numbers to back it up. But good thing we visualize the data, because just looking at the average, 13 point something, would not have given us the same idea. Rather than just run code we have in our project, we can of course also prototype new code in our notebook. You can create objects, functions, and classes the same way you would in regular Kotlin. For example, we may want to work on extending the dice roller class to also support rolling with disadvantage. We can support that function right in the notebook and then also make some extra notes using Markdown. We can give this function a try in our notebook and if we're happy with it, we can just move its implementation to our actual Kotlin project. So that's neat. But of course, not every aspect of the code you're writing may be well suited for drawing charts. If you're managing a catalog of items, for example, you might just wanna get an overview of the data you're working with. In my case, the dice app I'm working on doesn't just simulate dice rolling, it also stores an index of all the dice I own, their color, the number of sides, and the price for which I bought them. We could just work with that data straight away by accessing the available dice variable, but this is actually a great opportunity to show off another strength of Kotlin notebooks. It's integration with data frames. Kotlin Data Frames is a library that you can use whenever you're processing columnar data, so anything that looks roughly like a spreadsheet. We can add data frame support by using percent %use again, just like we saw previously. And then with the backend of my project running, I can actually create a data frame, so a grid of values, directly from the JSON endpoint in my app. And when you take a look at the dice frame variable, you get a nice and once again interactive representation of all the information that's in our system. And from here, you can use the data frame library to your heart's content to explore the data. Data frames are certainly worth their own video. And for some exploration of the topic, I suggest you watch the recording of the Kotlin Conf talk, replacing SQL with Kotlin's data frames on the Las Vegas Strip from Andrew Goldberg. We have that one linked below. To give you just a small taste though, whether you want to compute a sum or add a new column that's computed based off the other values of a row, data frames have got you covered. To be honest with you, we've only scratched the surface of what Kotlin notebooks can do for you. You can provide custom visualizations for your values, use a boatload of different libraries and more. They are really powerful, whether you're doing the type of exploration like we just did, or whether you're pushing things much further, like doing deep learning with Kotlin, optimizing business processes, or working with loads of customer data. And those were actually all topics of three different Kotlin Conf talks from 2023 that feature Kotlin notebooks. So if your curiosity is awakened, I'd encourage you to take a look at them. But of course, we also want to encourage you to try it yourself. The team at JetBrains is eager for you to give it a shot and hear about what you're doing with Kotlin Notebooks. We hope this way of working with Kotlin code is exciting for you as it is for us. You can explore the notebooks in IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate or on JetBrains Data Lore. We also have a starter notebook that you can take a look at linked in the description. I hope you'll have a great time with Kotlin Notebooks. So. Have a nice Kotlin and have an even nicer notebook. Take care, everyone.